Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a special greetings to all the daughters present tonight. celebration tonight and it actually gives me great pleasure to introduce myself as the 2013 daughter of the year that's really good now let's begin by acknowledging that we meet on the land of first people peoples who share it with us through treaty agreements and that we appreciate this ability to live together in mutual respect. I'm pleased to welcome you to the Daughters Day, to the Daughter Day of the Girl celebration on behalf of Daughters Day, that's the group that is putting on this uh, event this evening, uh, a project of international Association of Citizens for a Civic Society. And I think this is the time when I would introduce the members of that group, right? <laughs> if I can have the list, <laughs> if I can get the list, I would appreciate to so that I can, I can name them. I know them, but I don't want to call them by the wrong names. <laughs> Thank you. Well, at this point, I would like to uh, introduce Mr. Chara, Chara Kera. I should have warned you that I'll be murdering the names. <laughs> he is the chair of Daughters Day, and Judge Batia. He's the founder of the Gandhi, no, he's the Daughters Day actually, he's one of the founders of Daughters Day. He's actually the one who pulled me into the organization, so I appreciate your doing that. And then we have uh, Mr. Jack, Mr. Shah. <laughs> Thank you. Now, again, as you may recall, in 2012, the United Nations created the Day of the Girl Child to be celebrated each year on October 11th. So, we happen to be celebrating on the right day. And this evening, actually, Daughter's Day marks the day of the girl child with a special visit from a very special daughter, Ramona Monsell, who is here with us today. The event was made possible by support from the Mahatma Gandhi Canadian Foundation for Peace, for World Peace, and McEwan University. And at this point, I would like to call on our sponsors to bring brief greetings. I was told to say brief greetings. <laughs> I'll start with Trina Joshi, who is going to do it on behalf of the International Association of Citizens for a Civics Society. Trina. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Trina Joshi, and thanks a lot, Christina, for introducing me. Um, I'm here to represent uh, the International Association of Citizens for a Civil Society. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome you all and our guest of honor, Ms. Romana Mansoor, 
to the celebration of the International Day of the Girl. What better occasion could we think of to express our solidarity to the cause of promoting girls' rights? I'm deeply humbled to see such a great turnout because your very presence tonight bears testimony to our belief in the value of human rights, the rights that, that are fundamental to the creation of a civil society, a society that is able to provide space to our girls where they can realize their full potential without the barriers of gender stereotypes. And days like the International Day of the Girl serve as a fine reminder of the gargantuan work that still lies ahead. Just this morning, I was at a similar celebration where a panelist, a young woman, she drew our attention to the disparaging portrayal of women by the media and its effects on our young girls. While it was no news to me, I was certain it was certainly discomforting to see how the media, which is supposed to be a tool for laying the foundation of a strong democracy, is, uh, is guilty of showing up to use gender bias. While women have indeed come of age, uh, the discourse on women's rights still remains relevant as ever as it was before. And that is where people like Ms. Mansoor serve as a big hit to inspire us to march on. In, inspiration personified, that, that is Ramana Mansoor for us. While domestic violence left her blind for life, she surmounted obstacles by summoning her indomitable spirit to stand up against domestic violence in a very non-violent way. And that was education. After pursuing her master's degree, she's on her way to become a lawyer. And this one effort has the potential of igniting the courage in so many others. That one voice is lending voices to several others. Friends, now that we have gathered here for a cause, let's make this symbolism of solidarity turn into a tangible result. In the end, I would like to thank the Daughters' Day Committee for organizing this event and showing such a powerful piece of work. My heart is bursting, bursting with emotions and ideas and the zeal to do something. And I sh I'm sure that I share this in common with all of you sitting in this room today. And also, thanks to you all for making the time to join us in the celebration of our steps towards gender equity and gender equality. Thank you all. You can tell she's a journalist, right? Very good one at that. Thanks, Trina. And next, I'll, I'll invite Dr. John Col Collett, the Vice President, Academic and Provost of McEwan University to come and address us, please. Thanks, Christina, and welcome to McEwan University. Uh, I too would like to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 land, and we at McEwan strive each day to be worthy of the terms of that treaty, but also the spirit and the peaceful intent of that treaty, which was signed so many years ago. Um, if you have ever been to a university convocation, you may remember that the chancellor and president and senior officials of the university dressed in the very best clothing of the 17th century uh, are led by a person called a beetle. And the beetle carries the mace, the ceremonial mace in the 21st century, but there was a time when universities and the towns and cities in which they lived, there was not much harmony there. And in fact, it was actually dangerous for university people to go out from where the gowns were worn into the town, hence the phrase town and gown. 
And so the chancellor or the president or many of the senior officials were always preceded when they went out from the university and into the town by the mace bearer. And it was not ceremonial, it was actually there to protect people from being harmed by the townsfolk who did not really like the university people very much. Uh, over time though, we have come to realize that we are a part of our communities. We at McEwen are proud to be a downtown urban university with a role to play in the city of Edmonton. And for the most part, peace has reigned on our campuses for a very, very long time. We are a place of thoughtful reflection. We are a place of what Abraham Lincoln called the better angels of our nature. But from time to time, violence invades, even the sanctity of a university campus. And frankly, as university people, we are not sure how to respond to this. It is so foreign to our natures, it is so foreign to our mission, to our vision of the world, that it always takes us aback. And we often have to think very long and hard about what to do. We don't want to close our doors. We don't want to live in fear. And I think if there is one aspect of tonight's Daughter's Day celebration, it is embodied by our guest speaker, who has overcome the foreign violence that ought never to be on a university campus, risen above it, and has a powerful message of how we should respond in a positive way to leave violence where it belongs, which is not in our world, frankly, and to turn our universities into places genuinely of harmony and peace. And if I might leave with this one thought, change does happen. And for those of you who are daughters, your opportunities now are so vastly different than they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I was the Dean of Applied Health Sciences at Brock University before I came to McEwen. And in my faculty, every program was competitively entered. You had to be the best student to get in because we would have eight or nine applications for every position in nursing, in physical education, in kinesiology, in sport management, whatever the area was. My faculty was more than 70% young women as students, simply because they were the best students that were applying to our programs. This is not a good message for the young men in the audience. But the point is that it's not that long ago when to find a single woman in a medical school or an engineering faculty would have been difficult to do. And now, law schools and medical schools are more than half populated by female students. Engineering faculties are now very, very commonly a third to 40% of students who are women. It has all changed. The power structure of the world is changing. And the future will be very different if the daughters of today become the mothers of tomorrow with a clear vision for what the world should be like, one of peace, one of harmony, one of genuine collaboration and collegiality, the sorts of things that any university should aspire to be and that we at McEwen do. Welcome on behalf of David Atkinson, our president, John Day, our board chair. Welcome on behalf of all of those at McEwen. I would love to stay, but I am a son and not a daughter. And uh, my plans have had to change. My 93-year-old mom needs me tonight, and I'm going to go and, and do that. But uh, there are others from McEwen who will bring the McEwen spirit to the festivities. Again, thank you so much for the honor of being here tonight. Have a wonderful night. Well, we are glad, John, that you are going to look after someone's daughter. Thank you. Well, uh, I've also got a, a letter here from Honorable Dave Hancock, Minister of Human uh, Services. And so I'll share that with you. I'll read it. So you have to bear with me, if I can find it. Yeah, it's just hiding somewhere. <laughs> I kept it safe. In mic, OK, Mike, here we go. OK. Welcome everyone to this special event in honor of International Day of the Girl. This day recognizes the importance of equal treatment and opportunities for girls around the world. It also reminds us about the particular challenges that girls face and the need to take action. 
Today, we recognize the contributions and achievements of girls and women in Alberta, and we also have to ask them ourselves what do we need to do to improve the opportunities and the quality of life for girls. Our government's goal is to build an Alberta where everyone lives in dignity. Together, the work of the government and concerned and passionate women and girls like you will make our province a place where everyone is valued, where everyone has equal opportunity and the encouragement to succeed. I thank all of you here today for coming to hear the stories, view the film, and engage in meaningful discussion on how we can take action to improve the lives of girls in our province. Dave Hancock. Well, at this stage, maybe I should tell you a little bit about the uh, Daughters' Day Committee. Since, since they started, that's about last year or two years ago now, they have been having a number of events in the community. But I only tell you about two, and one is the Daughters' Day celebration. Um, this was started, well, first of all, Daughters' Day is actually a community initiative. Uh, to highlight the importance of the daughters in all our lives because we all have daughters somehow. Every girl and woman is a daughter and to support the flourishing of uh, communities committed to the end of all discrimination and to stopping human rights abuses against women. Now, Today, I can tell you about two activities that they have been engaged in, main ones, or one they have engaged in, the other one they are actually working on. And one, the first one is the annual Daughters' Day celebration, where women making a difference, a positive difference in Alberta, are honored as Daughters of the Year. And to date, the lives, contributions, and achievements of 14 daughters have been honored, including Roman, who is our speaker today, our guest speaker, Rene Vogt, sorry, Vogas, Bourgeois, Bourgeois. I knew it was French, that's why I can't uh, say it. <laughs> <laughs> Mona Gills, Shone McCrory, and myself are present today. So, congratulations to all the leaders. And the committee is also working on a new project which involves having uh, consultations with a group of women from diverse communities. And so they will be collecting stories from them or about gender discrimination and eventually they are going to develop a, a community handbook that can be used by members of the community in dealing with some of the issues that are going to be highlighted in the report. So I just mentioned those two, but they have been very busy because I know last year they had so many community events that they, were, they, they, they organized and so on. So if you would like actually to keep updates and about Daughters' Day activities and to receive any information about Daughters' Day, please do sign up at the registration table. I think some of you already did that. I saw a number of us as we were coming, signing in. If you haven't, please, this is your chance to, to reminding you to go and sign in. And also note that whatever it is that they do, they cannot do it without the support that they get from the community. And so donations are always welcome. I think we give tax receipts too, don't we? Yes, we do. And the government is encouraging us to give, to donate, so we can get some of it back. <laughs>